Um, welcome. Thank you. I, I'm not sure if this is working. I guess it's working now. Let me state clearly where I probably agree with the other witnesses. We have been in a period of global warming, but it's been going on for about 200 years. Also, there have been several periods like the last 10 years uh, when the warming has ceased. In fact, there's been a little bit of cooling over the past 10 years. There have even been periods of substantial cooling, for example, from 1940 to 1970. You can see that on Dr. Pachauri's card, uh, chart. Atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide have increased from about 280 to 380 parts per million over the past 100 years. The combustion of fossil fuels, coal, oil, natural gas has contributed to this increase in the atmosphere. Finally, increasing concentrations of CO2 in the atmosphere will cause some warming of the Earth's surface. The key question is, will the net effect of the warming and any other effects of CO2 be good or bad for humanity? I believe the increase of CO2 will be good. I predict that future historians will look back on this period much as we now look back on the period just before we passed the 18th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution to prohibit the manufacturing, sale, or transportation of intoxicating liquors. At the time, the 18th Amendment seemed to be exactly the right thing to do. Uh, it was the 1917 version of saving the planet from the ravages of climate change. More than half the states enacted prohibition laws before the 18th Amendment was finally ratified. Only one state, uh, Rhode Island voted against, and my, my hat's off to the senator from Rhode Island. I'm sorry, he's not here. If, uh, well, there were many people who thought that prohibition might do more harm than good, but they were completely outmatched by the temperance movement, whose motives and methods had much in common with the movement to stop climate change. Deeply sincere people thought they were saving humanity from the evils of alcohol, just as many people now sincerely think they're saving humanity from the evils of CO2. Prohibition was a mistake, and our country's probably still not fully recovered from the damage it did. For example, institutions like organized crime got their start in that era. Drastic limitations on CO2 are likely to damage our country in an analogous way. There's tremendous opportunity for corruption there. There's little argument in the scientific community that the direct effect of doubling CO2 concentrations will be a small increase in the Earth's temperature on the order of one degree centigrade. That's not enough to worry about. Further increases will cause even less. To get the scary scenarios that we hear about, uh, water vapor and clouds must amplify the direct effects of CO2. In fact, observations suggest that water vapor and clouds actually diminish the already small global warming expected from CO2, not amplify it. The evidence comes from satellite measurements of infrared radiation escaping from the Earth into outer space, from measurements of the sunlight reflected from clouds, and from measurements of the temperature of the Earth's surface. I keep hearing about the, uh, the pollutant CO2, or about poisoning the atmosphere with CO2. CO2 is not a pollutant not a poison, and we should not corrupt the English language by depriving pollutant and poison of their original meaning. When we exhale, each of us here, our exhale breath is 4% CO2. That's about 40,000 parts per million, 100 times the current atmospheric concentrations. CO2 is absolutely essential for life. Commercial greenhouse operators often use CO2 as a fertilizer to improve the health and growth rate of their plant. Plants and our own primate ancestors evolved when the levels of atmospheric CO2 were about a thousand times, a thousand parts per million, a level we'll probably not reach by burning fossil fuels. By the way, the oceans did just fine then at a thousand parts per million. The, there was no problem with acidification and lots of uh, coral reefs uh, grew very vigorously. We're all aware that the green revolution has increased crop yields around the world. Part of this wonderful development comes from improved uh, crop varieties, better use of mineral fertilizers, herbicides, etc. But no small part of the yield improvement has come from increased atmospheric levels of CO2. If we 
decrease our current levels of CO2 to those that prevailed a few hundred years ago. I don't know how we'd do that, but if we did, we'd lose part of the Green Revolution, and the Green Revolution has yet to run its course if we let CO2 continue to go up. I often hear there's a consensus behind the idea of impending disaster from climate change, that already it may be almost too late to avert this catastrophe, even if we stop burning fossil fuels. Well, um, first, what's correct in science is not determined by consensus, but by experiment, observation, testing. I can't think of any other branch of science where an international organization is needed to determine the truth. This is the first time this has ever happened. Uh, Secondly, I don't think there is a consensus about an impending climate crisis. Like the temperance movement 100 years ago, the climate catastrophe movement has enlisted the mass media, leadership of scientific societies, trustees of charitable foundations, many other influential people to their cause. Even elementary school teachers and writers of children's books terrify our children with the idea of impending climate doom. Children should not be force-fed propaganda masquerading as science. Many of you know that in two, the year 2007, a British court ruled that if Al Gore's book, An Inconvenient Truth, was used in British public schools, the children had to be told of 11 particularly troubling inaccuracies. For example, the court ruled it was not possible to attribute Hurricane Katrina to CO2. Indeed, that we had taken a small fraction of the many billions of dollars that we spend on climate change research and propaganda and fix the dikes and pumps around New Orleans, uh, there would have been no disaster. I regret that climate change issues have become confused with serious problems like secure energy supplies, protecting our environment, and figuring out where future generations will get energy or chemical feedstocks after we've burnt all the fossil fuel we can find. I hope we don't confuse these laudable goals with hysterics about carbon footprints. I hope car Congress will choose to promote investment in technology that addresses real problems and scientific research that will help us cope with these real problems. Thank you. Thank you very much.